Hello everyone, welcome to Insights for Health with Dr. Ree. I have been talking to you about wisdom uh, for uh, becoming well and uh, the very first step was to reduce or improve insulin resistance. Uh, I talked to you about two simple solutions uh, to improve ins uh, insulin resistance and one was intermittent fasting uh, that was basically the timing of fasting and timing of your eating and next was exercise. Uh, today I want to talk to you uh, about the details of exercise and what happens at the cellular level and how the benefits are achieved at the cellular level. So this is actually uh, a model of a cell and if you look here this is the cell membrane or cell um, skin of the cell and here is the uh, nucleus or the brain of the cell and then the huge uh, area that's uh, marked in red here is actually called endoplasmic reticulum it's like the liver and then we have little little guys here and uh, these are actually um, these little guys um, are mitochondria and then um, this one um, actually the the green one ones I believe actually are uh, representing lysosome and this is where the intermittent fasting and exercise actually have specific benefits and I'm going to talk to you about the benefits at that level today. Okay, so uh, what happens with exercise? Um, according to research, uh, when you actually do intermittent fasting, uh, when you eat antioxidant foods, and when you are exercising, you have all these benefits. And so if you look at the uh, chart here, it's kind of very complicated. Uh, but basically, when you fast and exercise, uh, you have the following benefits. Uh, new, uh, glucose um, actually is no longer used after about 16 hours of fasting. And the, the primary nutrition becomes ketone. And when, when ketone becomes the primary nutrition, uh, brain-derived neurotrophic factor uh, becomes uh, stimulated. And BDNF stim stimulates remodeling and repair of all kinds of cells, including the brain cells, including your muscle cells, liver cells, and skin cells. So you improve all kinds of cells, including breaking down the fat uh, because uh, you actually are uh, no longer using glucose for energy and you're using fat for energy and only way to use fat for energy is to break it down. Uh, so this is the uh, benefits of fasting and exercise. So fasting is um, basically just like exercise in terms of energy metabolism and a similar thing happens at the level of the cell as you exercise. Um, there are some differences, but as far as the um, renewal of your cell is concerned, similar things happen. And uh, when you eat after the exercise or fasting period, uh, your nutrition switches back to uh, glucose and it, um, you actually go into the building and recovery mode. So you need a fine balance of remodeling and building, repair and recovery. And so this is basically what happens. So if you look at your 24 hours, this is how it's roughly uh, can be divide, divided into three portions. There's awake fasting for eight hours, and then there's asleep fasting for eight hours, and then eating for eight hours. So, so if you roughly do this, about 16 hours of fasting and uh, eight hours of eating, then you can actually have optimized balance of re uh, remodeling and building and repair and recovery. So this, this is kind of very, very uh, optimum way to design your life, uh, design your lifestyle. And so uh, here is um, the benefit. Uh, here are the, the chart that actually describes the benefits of exercise and it's pretty simple. Uh, nutrition um, basically is um, switching from glucose mode to ketone. 
and uh, that actually in turn stimulates brain-derived neurotrophic factor among other things and starting with the brain your body begins to remodel and repair so when you fast don't think you're being deprived you are actually remodeling you're beginning to remodel and when you fast you're not depri uh, depriving yourself of nutrition your brain is starting to uh, repair itself and brain is be becoming smarter and then when you actually eat the healthy food your brain completes the uh, remodeling, remodeling process by building and it also completes the uh, repair process by recovering. So that's a very simple way to think about how this new lifestyle uh, format helps you uh, improve your wellness. So uh, what happens with intermittent fasting is um, charted here. Um, so with the chart here, uh, intermittent fasting alone, your weight changes by uh, weight loss of five pounds, weight circumference about uh, minus two inches, and HDL level goes, down, uh, goes up by 2.6. Your triglyceride level uh, initially goes up by 12, but it will go down after the first, uh, first month. And then your insulin resistance actually initially slightly goes up, but then again, starting with the second month, there's a significant reduction in the insulin resistance. Uh, with exercise, similar thing happens, but uh, with uh, one key difference. Uh, rather than five pounds of weight loss, about two pounds of weight loss in the first month, and then 1.1 1 .1, uh, uh, inches of circumference, weight circumference reduction, and uh, 4.7 uh, points of HDL level going up, and minus 35.8. Uh, levels of uh, basically points in triglyceride and uh, minus 0.5 uh, after the initial first month. So you need to do at least one month to see a uh, significant difference. Um, but what happens when you combine? Because as today I said I was going to talk to you about uh, practical uh, uh, actually experience that you're going to have when you uh, do the intermittent fasting with exercise uh, for at least a month. Um, so when you combine the two, uh, you actually lose about seven pounds. So it's almost additive in this case. Some, for some people, it's synergistic, so you may lose up to 10 pounds if you are actually, you, if you weigh a lot more. This is based on uh, people who weigh around 150 to 160 pounds, about my, my weight. And then weight circumference uh, is a reduction. Uh, uh, is about minus 1.6 inches. HDL level uh, increases about 5.3, uh, which is um, pretty much uh, better than either one alone. And then triglyceride, triglyceride level of 43.8. So that's actually um, a significant reduction, just even in the first month when you exercise. And then insulin resistance um, actually reduces or improves within the first month uh, to uh, 0.9, minus 0.9, and then to 1.5 starting second month. So when you do both, you have this synergistic effect. So there's no reason to do, to do just one or the other because when you wake up in the morning, you've already fasted at least 12 hours. Just go for another four hours. And during the four hours of fasting uh, or six hours of fasting, do some walking, do some hiking then you've already put your cells and uh, put your body into amazing uh, repair process, right? It, and you initiate the breakdown of fat and you, ma you start making ketones and then ketones go into the uh, blood, um, uh, you know, go through the blood brain barrier, go into the brain and stimulates BDNF. And then when, you B when your B BDNF is stimulated, your brain makes more synaptic connections, more efficient synaptic connections, and so you make better connections, so you become smarter, and then throughout the whole body, you become more resistant to injury, more sensitive to insulin, so your body becomes much more efficient. So think about uh, fasting and exercise as your tuning up time, and you don't have to do, uh, you don't have to expend a lot of energy, all you have to do is not eat other than drink, um, you know, drink lots of fluids. And you don't have to go in the gym and work out and you know, lift hundreds of pounds. 
you just have to walk. And then um, within those, um, after the six hours of fasting, uh, uh, after you, uh, you had a good night's rest, you can do your rainbow colored food diet. And so um, with that combination, with the combination of the two, you will um, experience amazing benefits even in the first month. And as you do the second month and the third month, you will actually have more energy and your brain will be smarter. So I would really like you to try this and make sure you actually have different forms of uh, exercise that you can incorporate. That there, it doesn't have to be just one kind. But walking is the most um, uh, practical way of putting your body uh, to move, uh, the, the putting your body to some form of exercise, right? And so I just said walking or hiking. Uh, so if you actually look at the slide here, go walking or hiking is the motto for today's lecture. And um, uh, a word of wisdom here, uh, 1,000 mile journey begins with a single step. So let's begin your first step today.